Um, so, okay, good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm Yi Xuan Yuan here. And uh, I am the uh, postgraduate recruitment team. And I take charge of today's seminar. And our first speaker is Dr. Bernard Chu. And uh, he will introduce our department and also our department recruitment information and also about the Hong Kong PFS. So and let me wait a little bit and he will be online and uh, uh, he will soon make an introduction. Hey, I saw. Hi, hi, Yi Xun. Yeah, hi. hello, hello. Hi. I will stop the screen sharing, and you can start the presentation. And okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I saw Ray here. Hello. Hello, morning. Morning. I also see Professor Wong, Eric. Yeah, hello, hello. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so uh, for the for the audience uh, here, I, I know that uh, we have a faculty member, but we, mostly we have uh, students. So uh, student doesn't know me yet. So uh, my name is uh, Bernard Xu. Uh, I'm the program leader for the uh, CTUEE program. Uh, here we want to give you more information about the uh, Hong Kong PFS in particular, and we also want to give you some information about admission. So. Uh, Hong Kong PFS is highly competitive, uh, so not very many students could get Hong Kong PFS. So um, I also would like to give you more information about our regular program uh, as well. So, uh, so as you are here for mostly for Hong Kong PFS, uh, we, we uh, let me briefly introduce Hong Kong PFS first. Uh, Hong Kong PFS is established by, by the Research Grant Council in Hong Kong. Uh, it aims to attract the uh, most uh, talented students from around the world. So it gives you a, a, a high uh, monthly stipend, uh, 26,000 per month, and also uh, a, a uh, travel allowance uh, of uh, high travel allowance, 13,000. And also uh, with uh, the Hong Kong PFS, uh, the university will also uh, provide you with a uh, um, graduate study entrance scholarship. Um, so this entrance scholarship cover tuition free uh, as well as accommodation uh, in the first year of your research study. Okay, so uh, what's the selection criteria uh, of the uh, Hong Kong PFS? So first of all, academic ex excellence. So, um, so you have to get high marks, and if you uh, get, uh, if you are graduated from a high rank university, you can also get extra mark for for your academic academic excellence. And there is also marks allocated to uh, research ability and potential. So. Uh, typically, uh, we, we want uh, journal papers, okay, but uh, um, not very many journal paper because you are you are in the master or undergraduate level. So one or two journal paper would typically be be enough. Uh, give you uh, a, a full score in this category, and also awards, performance, and uh, performance in uh, competition uh, would be would be useful and a good reference letter would be useful as well. Um, so 
uh, and other criteria uh, would be the communication skill and interpersonal skill. So, so um, if you uh, you if you are shortlist, uh, you will be uh, you will have interviews. Uh, so uh, by the in, uh, by the panel. So uh, the performance in that interview will also, of course, very important. And uh, the research proposal, a research proposal is, uh, should be well written. Um, so it should be innovative so that uh, it also demonstrate your communication skill. And also the uh, leadership's ability. Uh, so leadership's ability in terms of your involvement in uh, extracurricular activities. So cultural diversity will also add marks. So if you are from, um, from um, either um, um, countries, okay, um, other than, uh, so if you are from, 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 from countries uh, around the world, then you add marks for cultural diversity. So, um, so if you are not, uh, if you do not get the uh, Hong Kong PFS, okay, uh, you will be automatically considered for our main round entrance. So you do not need uh, an extra application for our main round entrance. And uh, the studentship, uh, of course, is a bit lower than, than Hong Kong PFS, but still, still uh, enough for living in Hong Kong. So let's uh, look at the uh, mission requirement. Um, so uh, actually a mission in the regular program is still very competitive. And uh, I, draw, I want to draw your attention to the English requirement. So uh, you need uh, IELTS, uh, either IELTS or TOEFL, uh, IELTS 6.5 uh, and then the TOEFL is 79. So, so uh, the, the English requirement could be waived for, for applicant from from university using English as a primary uh, medium of instruction. Okay, let's look at uh, our university. Uh, so our university was established in 1994. Now it has 10 uh, colleges, okay, 27 academic departments. Um, so uh, we have number of uh, prestigious research center and Yi Yi has uh, one stake key lab uh, as well. So uh, the, the, uh, um, we have, uh, we're interested in uh, five main categories. A, uh, so applied electromagnetic, uh, optoelectronics, uh, nanotechnology, networking, wireless communication. And uh, we have a large group in uh, computer engineering and control system. So, um, so here are basically the topics uh, in uh, applied electromagnetics. Okay, so, so a uh, major uh, application would be to use uh, the um, electromagnetic to generate image for tumor detection. Okay, so, um, we uh, we also have uh, development in the electronic and photonic device okay, uh, for, for different applications and make use of uh, state-of-the-art uh, micro and nanoscale technology. So uh, the other uh, main research area would be uh, communication. So it's a uh, networking and wireless communication. Uh, so, so in networking, um, so we uh, investigate the assessment and improvement of the quality of service in a telecommunication network. And uh, it, it involves mathematical programming, machine learning, and, uh, and the development of algorithm to optimize the performance uh, of, the, of the communication networks. And of course, our networking um, would also uh, include um, network built to recognize uh, face, uh, face recognition, example, and also uh, medical imaging as well. Um, so wireless communication, our, our, we have faculty member uh, focusing on the research on uh, future cellular communication system. So later on uh, in the seminar, you will, you will have talks um, from our faculty member related to this area. So uh, our faculty member have developed um, uh, innovative schemes uh, for detection 
uh, and uh, in, the, in use of the signal processing. So uh, then uh, finally, yeah, we have a large group uh, in uh, computer engineering focusing on uh, many different areas uh, in, in a computer engineering area. So such as the artificial intelligence, a not, so, so now it's a hot topic uh, and uh, medical imaging. Um, so so um, my expertise was in medical imaging and other um, application as well. Okay. So I should have. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, here, um, I would like to briefly go through the, the PhD requirement. So the basically the organization of our program. Uh, so. Of course, uh, we have a number of coursework requirements uh, that you will need uh, to, to satisfy. Uh, and also there are TA activities. So for those of you uh, receiving stipends, uh, you, will, you will need to um, have uh, teaching duties, some, of, some teaching duties. I will look at the teaching duties later on. Uh, and then of course, uh, in order for you to graduate, uh, you need to have a research thesis. Okay, uh, coursework requirement, uh, we have four courses. Uh, so um, number of courses are listed as the core course. So out of those lists, uh, you have to select three courses. Uh, and there's another list for elective course. So, so you need one course uh, for elective. Um, so elective course can be taken from other department as well as other university in Hong Kong. Uh, so, we typically uh, do not entertain credit transfer uh, at, uh, unless you have, you have taken the exact same course uh, before, uh, such as in our master program. So if you have graduated in, uh, as a, uh, in, in our master program, you may have taken some courses and those can be transferred uh, to your PhD credit. And also uh, usually we do not entertain late drops. So uh, when you, uh, if you are admitted uh, and in the first term, uh, you will, will fill in uh, a form. Okay? Uh, basically, this is the cross plan uh, that you will follow in the, in the remaining of your PhD studies. So that is endorsed by your uh, supervisor and also the uh, program leader, so, uh, uh, now myself, okay, the program leader. So, um, so usually, um, if you have uh, already enrolled courses based on that list, uh, we do not allow you to drop uh, later on. Uh, so, so uh, that 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 is uh, that is our uh, that 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 is basically our requirement. Okay? Uh, and then um, other courses, a hey, uh, EE eight thousand and one uh, is a guided study, so uh, it's involved a literature survey. Um, of uh, of your research topic, so again, it is guided by by your um, supervisor, and I also give you a number of workshops okay, that will um, and uh, that will give you a better skill in your presentation. And then we have the research uh, seminar courses. Uh, the research seminar courses are taken over two semesters, in which you will attend a number of uh, seminars and write up a report in each, uh, sem uh, in each um, uh, semester. Usually we require six, uh, six, six reports, okay? six reports, uh, meaning that you, you report on six talks. Okay? Um, so another requirement would be the uh, Collaborative Institutional Training Initiative. So basically there are around uh, 10 modules okay, related to um, general areas of research. Okay, and, ethics okay, and then you have to complete them uh, um, and get a, a passing score uh, in order to pass this program. So, uh, and then SGS teaching first step. So uh, this course is uh, given by the SGS. So, so, uh, so it's basically give you fundamental skills about, about teaching. 
So you will you will be responsible for uh, teaching uh, in, in, in courses okay, um, in, when, when you are a PhD student. So this gives you a fundamental training in, in, in doing uh, teaching. So um, you, you have to receive a minimum, minimum of com communicative uh, GPA of 2.5 in order to renew your scholarship, which means that if you uh, do not get a GPA uh, at least 2.5, okay, your studentship will be suspended. So this is uh, very important uh, for you for you to satisfy. So living in Hong Kong is uh, rather costly. So you rather have your studentship. Okay. So here are a number of assessment um, in your PhD program, uh, in your PhD study. So uh, uh, first of all, it's uh, about uh, qualifying examination. Uh, qualifying examination is typically taken uh, at the end of your first year, and you must pass uh, within two attempts. So I will talk about qualifying exam in more detail later on. And uh, there are a number of reports. Hey, so, so the reports, uh, so now it's a four-year program. Uh, so everybody now enter the, our PhD study. We study for four years. Um, so uh, there are a number of reports. Uh, so uh, we have we you have to uh, hand in one report annually. The first year uh, we have a qualifying report. A qualifying report will be assessed with an auto examination. So uh, your uh, qualifying panel member uh, will uh, need to hold an oral examination review. So in which, of course, you have to present your research progress. Uh, and then your qualifying panel member uh, will, will evaluate uh, your report as well. Okay? And, uh, and then you have to fill out a form okay? and, and then uh, saying, uh, or, and the panel member must sign uh, in order to support that you have already um, satisfied uh, their expectation. So in the second, third uh, year also, uh, you have to um, submit an annual progress report. Uh, however, the oral examination uh, would be optional. Okay? So it depends on your quality uh, uh, qualifying man panel member. So um, before you graduate, uh, you have to deliver a talk in a Friday seminar. Um, so in a Friday seminar, uh, the, the talk, uh, the audience would be non-specialists, uh, such as your fellow PhD uh, students, a fellow PhD classmate. Um, so they may not uh, have uh, specialties uh, in the same area as you. Okay? So, so you will uh, deliver a talk so that they can understand. So this is very, very important. So, so you have to train your communication skill in order to communicate with non-specialists. So it's typically uh, scheduled in the second half of the PhD study. Uh, so either the end of the second year or the beginning of the third year. Uh, finally, of course, you have to submit your thesis. Okay? Of course, still at the end of the fourth year. So again, we have a four year program here. Uh, regardless of whether you graduate with a bachelor degree or master degree now. Uh, so it is uh, typically produced on the basis of good publications. And, uh, and the standard requirement would be two or three journal paper rank um, in the top quartile. So, um, and then uh, you have to write it uh, with good English. So. Uh, you can also send it for editing. Professional editing service are available uh, and you can get rebate for editing. And then of course, there's uh, no plagiarism allowed in your, in your thesis. So, uh, okay, so uh, next thing is that, uh, so when you, when you are uh, admitted, of course, uh, you, you should, uh, apply for awkward ID. An awkward ID basically identify yourself as a scholar uh, and uh, you would add your application to CDU Scholar once, once they are published. Once your, your, um, 
your articles is published. Okay. So uh, qualifying examination. Uh, so I mentioned that uh, qualifying examination, uh, you will take uh, the QE in the, in, in the, by the end of your first year. So the aim of the qualifying exam would be to test the fundamental knowledge and uh, to prepare you for undertaking independent research. But uh, QE is separated and independent of your research. So, so QE is, uh, is less on testing your knowledge in the research area and more on testing the fundamental in the, in the broad area okay, uh, related to your research. Right? So you have to know, uh, basically uh, the test would be in the undergraduate level. And then the qualifying exam is separate from the from the QP assessment. So I, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, in the first year, by the end of the first year, you have to submit a qualifying report and it has to be assessed by your a qualifying panel member with a oral examination. So this uh, qualifying report assessment is uh, separate from the qualifying exam. The qualifying exam is more on testing your fundamental knowledge, okay, but not uh, really in your research area. So, so it's less on, it's less focused in your research area, as you say, and it tests uh, the fundamentals of a broader, uh, broader area related to your research. So uh, the QE uh, must be passed by the second attempt and within the two years. So if you do not pass in the first year, uh, you have the second attempt. Uh, if you do not pass in the second attempt, uh, you, will, you will need to be terminated. Okay? So your study will have to be terminated. So uh, it is necessary for you to pass the QE within two years. So the, uh, of course, uh, if you're here, I uh, will give you uh, more detailed um, information about the QE, but in general, uh, the QE uh, is, uh, so you will examine uh, by topics. So you will of course uh, have the opportunity uh, to choose uh, a topic and a topic that you are familiar with. So we have uh, seven topics here electromagnetics, uh, photonics, electronic uh, communication network, uh, and uh, control and optimization, and computing, and data analysis. So you basically fill out an application form, um, choosing the topic. And then uh, you will uh, need to have the form endorsed by your supervisor. So your supervisor should help you with uh, preparing the uh, qualifying examination. So the, uh, so the next thing would be on the thesis examination. Um, so the physics examination uh, is, uh, so this is a full chart uh, for, for thesis examination. So, so you and, and uh, your supervisor, um, main, mainly your supervisor would, would, would need to submit uh, intent for submitting your thesis and uh, and uh, basically choosing three examiners. And then of course you need to submit your thesis. And the examiner will submit reports on the thesis and to see whether uh, it, is, uh, it has the uh, sufficient academic quality to be examined, to examine on. Uh, so there is a possibility of course that uh, one of the examiner uh, say that uh, it's not ready for oral examination, then you have to revise it uh, and then send it again. But if it's ready for the exam, uh, ready for the examination, uh, you will um, you will take part in the oral examination, and the oral examination consists of two parts. Okay, the first part would be on on a presentation. Uh, typically 30 minutes, but can be up to 45 minutes. Um, so this is a, the presentation um, highlighting your contribution uh, in your thesis. And then the three examiner, uh, we have an extensive Q&A uh, related to your topic that you have presented. 
And then, um, so there are a number of um, there are a number of there are a number of possibilities. Okay? So, so of course, uh, unconditional pass is rarely seen. Um, so, so uh, basically, pass without any other conditions, without any revision, etc. And uh, most of the time, uh, uh, the the panel will pass subject to a, a minor revision. And then the third possibility would be that pass subject to major revision, and the panel uh, would uh, have uh, would, would usually uh, indicate whether an other or examination is needed, or only you have to revise your 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 thesis. Okay. And then uh, so so um, another option, of course, would be that. Uh, you fail the examination, uh, and then uh, the examin uh, you have to take the examination and submit the thesis again, and take uh, the examination again. So, uh, in which case we have to start from the from the very beginning, and and the fourth option, uh, another option would be to recommend for for M field degree, for example. Uh, so if uh, the the um, thesis is not of uh, sufficient standard for a PhD thesis, then the panel member can also recommend uh, a lower degree, such as an M field degree. Okay, uh, and then uh, we we now we talked about the teaching assistants, uh, teaching assistant work. So every every of you receiving stipend uh, will need to teach. Uh, eight to ten hours in in the typically in only in uh, semester A and B. Okay? Although uh, some of you would have uh, would also uh, receive duties in uh, in the summer semester. Okay? If you receive duty in summer semester, usually you are you are exempt from either semester A or B. So typically two semesters. Okay, in these two semester, uh, you need to fulfill uh, eight to ten hours of teaching duties. So the teaching duties uh, would include teaching in classes. So of course it's determined by the course examiner, uh, but typically it will include uh, some teaching in class, some teaching, uh, some interaction with the students. So, so uh, you may need to give a number of tutorials, for example, and then uh, uh, most of the time, you need to grade assignments, uh, paper, and tests. And then, uh, for those courses that has left, uh, you need to uh, uh, look at the demonstration by the students. Okay? So, uh, grade grade the student labs. Okay? Uh, grade the student demonstration. Okay. So, uh, so you will again. Uh, the SGS will give you training. Uh, and also uh, our department will also give you training in, uh, in, in teaching. So the SGS uh, will give you uh, the SG8001. Uh, so everybody has to take this. It is uh, teach you elementary skill on, on teaching. And um, for those of you uh, uh, that uh, does not satisfy the following uh, English requirement. You also have to take another course okay, called English for Medium of Instruction. Um, so you will be exempted from this course if you get 6.5 in the speaking components of IELTS, and then uh, 20 or higher in the speaking component in TOEFL. So there's an opportunity that uh, you will be exempt from this course. Okay. And then we, we also, in our department, we also have a number of training sessions uh, to train you how to be a good TA. So uh, the evaluation and recognition. Uh, so you will be evaluated through um, a teaching and learning questionnaire. Okay. So basically the student uh, has the opportunity to rate uh, your teaching. And then you you may be eligible for awards. Okay, if you receive a high TLQ score for uh, multiple uh, semesters, and then of course you will be evaluated by the, by the course examiner or the course leader at the end of the semester. 
and then a uh, 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 bad performance in the uh, TA will be penalized by possible suspension of the studentship. Okay. So for scholarship and awards, okay, uh, we, we have additional scholarship and awards uh, every year. Okay, and uh, so a number of scholarships, okay, so uh, Outstanding Academic Performance Award, it is a one-off award of $1,000. Uh, and then uh, we have a research tuition scholarship. So research tuition scholarship will pay for one year tuition. So it save you quite a bit of money. Um, and then uh, it is assessed over a year period, typically. Um, typically from, from, from July of a year to June uh, of next year. So it's an um, academic year. And then the eligibility would be that uh, GPA would be at least 3.5. So, so, uh, so that's, that, that, that's why it's important to have a good GPA. And a publication is usually expected. So you will not be rated very high if you do not have publications. So uh, this is a highly competitive award as well. So publication is usually expected. So you will, you will have application, uh, you will need to apply by, by early July. Okay, so. So you get the award for the next year uh, you, uh, or the uh, coming academic year, you need to apply uh, in early July. So there are a number of activities uh, as well um, in our PhD program. Uh, so we, we uh, have a number of seminars or workshop uh, covering a number of things uh, so that you will typically need to encounter in your PhD studies. Um, so we have workshop on academic writing. Uh, we we'll have sharing from our faculty member related to academic writing. And uh, we have a seminar on stress management as well. Um, so of course we will have uh, a professional consultant uh, to, talk about, to talk about stress. Uh, management and also faculty member we talked about uh, this topic as well and also on career planning so we usually have we have uh, um, a faculty member um, uh, sharing on uh, the academic path that uh, he has he or she has taken okay, so so that's uh, top uh, these are the major topics of our seminars but but you can propose your topic as well so uh, we also uh, trying to establish channel uh, for PhD student to rec uh, to 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 um, to recommend topics, okay, to recommend topics. So so if you are particularly interested in a, in a topic, uh, then you sh you you can write in that system, and then uh, we will we will take that into consideration when we are planning for. Um, future workshops or seminars. Okay, so uh, the next thing is that uh, you will have, uh, you need to present uh, in your annual research symposium. So of course, um, information will be given to you uh, if you're here. Um, so typically we have over 50, 50 poster presentations. Um, so, uh, research symposium give you an opportunity to talk with uh, EE faculty and fellow PhD students, and you will have the opportunity to exchange with them and potentially uh, getting a collaborative uh, opportunity. Okay, so um, so you can of course you can discuss and find out about the research and see whether you can contribute on anything. Uh, related to the research and also whether they can contribute anything on your research, okay? Okay, uh, that's basically it. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention. So I think we have a Q&A session, right? So if you have any question, uh, you can either amuse yourself or you can type it in the chat um, chat box.
Uh, so maybe before the Q&A, I can share a little bit about the Hong Kong PFS. So, so um, basically, this is for the Hong Kong PFS. So I want to introduce three, sen three words. So how and whether and the what. So the uh, how was um, what I mentioned is that how to apply the Hong Kong PFS. So the procedure in our department is, is something like that. You first need to contact the supervisors. And after that, we need to finish the interview in our department because usually the Hong Kong PFS de uh, deadline is December 1st. So usually we will finish all the interviews before the mid middle of the December and after that uh, you if you are very good you are recommended to the Hong Kong PFS. To be noted here is that if you are able to be nominated to be the Hong Kong PFS then you will definitely receive the normal PhD offers. And the more I want to say that the Hong Kong PFS is a very uh, rigid um, applications because our department should uh, put the recommendation to the college and the college rec will recommend it to our university. And after that, the university will nominate the Hong Kong PFS to the government. So finally, then we will get the final result. It is very hard, personally speaking. And uh, this is how. And uh, the second is weather. Uh, the weather means that um, the weather means that, uh, as Bernard said, the criteria is very hard. And uh, personally speaking, I'm, I'm very lucky I'm in the Hong Kong PFS. So I want to share a little bit about my experiments. So um, actually my own information is something like that. I am a 985 undergraduate study and uh, with GPA uh, 6. Uh, 3.68, I ranked the first among the 58 students. And uh, in my undergraduate study, I won national scholarship and married student for three years. I want to mention here is that national scholarship is very important for the Hong Kong PFS uh, evaluations. And uh, uh, when I apply my PhD study, I was the first author of the two conference papers and some co-author journal papers. And also I have some administration position in the student union and I am excellent volunteers. And personally speaking, I think that maybe the relatively high interview scores is very important because when I finished my interview, my supervisor told me that uh, you ranked the first in the interview department, in the interview in the whole world department. So I don't know why, but I just want to say the interview is also occupied a lot in the final decisions. And I want to also uh, illustrate a little bit about my experiments. So I won the Hong Kong PFS during the 2012 to 2016 in the CUHK. Actually, at that time, I contact um, five universities, Hong Kong UCDU, PolyU, and CUHK and NUS. But I only received offer from CUHK and NUS. So I want to say that uh, just apply um, the most you want, the supervisor you wanted. And then, uh, personally speaking, actually, I want two offers from the CUHK, both in the CS department and also the EE department. But I only apply EE department for the Hong Kong PFS. So I just choose CUHK EE. So uh, as mentioned here, I want to say that every time when you apply Hong Kong PFS, you have two uh, choices. You only can choose two departments among the whole university, among uh, all the university in Hong Kong. Um, so at that time, I only apply CUHK of EE and uh, Poly UEE. And uh, so um, I want to say I um, have very good experiments as a Hong Kong PF device. Um, personally speaking, and, and very lucky, I have six months research exchange in Stanford. And uh, during my PhD study, I go to Milan, Chicago, Seattle, Seoul, and Japan for the conferences. So you can see I go to many different places for the uh, conference, but the uh, the 
the reason is that I published papers, right? I should have public, published some papers in the top conferences, and then I go to the uh, different places for the conferences. I think attending international conferences is very important for your PhD study. And uh, moreover, um, I won the Young Scientist Award in Hong Kong uh, Institute of Science, and I also I won several Best Student Research Award and Best Conference Papers. So after my PhD study in CUHK, I just spent one year postdoc in Stanford and then I back to CTU. So I want to see that um, studying Hong Kong as a Hong Kong PFS is very good experiments. I encourage all of you to uh, apply the Hong Kong PFS. So you should try, right? Maybe you could not get it, but at least you have tried it. You will never regret it. And uh, so uh, I want to say um, you have a lot of choices after PhD in Hong Kong. And as far as I know, um, many of my friends are going to US or may stay Hong Kong for postdoc, and then they may go to different places for the faculties. Of course, a lot, a lot of them go back to China and to be associate professor and even some of them to be directly as uh, the full professors. And uh, moreover, I want to say that if you are able to uh, be very excellent to be a PhD study in the, in the Hong Kong, then you may also get faculty position in Hong Kong, um, such as I have some friends going to Hong Kong UST and CUHK and Hong Kong U and, and even NUS as an assistant professor. So, uh, my suggestion here is that no matter you went to, uh, no matter what kind of place you went to uh, as your final PhD study, and please try your uh, best to be work hard and play hard and to publish as much as possible as you can. And also, I know many PhD students in Hong Kong uh, after the PhD study, they go to industries, they may go to the Facebook and Google and Tencent. So uh, that's all for my uh, experiences. I want to say um, I illustrate how to apply the Hong Kong PFS and uh, uh, whether uh, what kind of situation you are, you can successful. I just share my own experiences. And after that, I also show that what you can earn, uh, what you can learn as a PhD study uh, with Hong Kong PFS in Hong Kong. So um, I think that's all for for our introduction part. And uh, if you have any question, you can use your mic to ask questions and you can also so type uh, in the Zoom chat so that uh, Bernard and I can answer your questions. Anyway, thank you very much for your attendance. So Bernard, do you have anything want to share? Uh, I, I do not have additional things to share. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then if we don't have any questions, may I invite all of you to open the video so that we can take a group photo? Okay, thank you very much. So you are led to my presentation. So for some students who really want to ask questions in Chinese, it, it is also okay. You can type the Zoom chat so that we can answer your questions. So um, the reason, again, I want to say the reason for us to organize this kind of seminar is just to help you, to help you know more about our department, to help you know more about your future life if you are admitted as a, a PhD in our department. So I just saw very interesting background. So one student is just in, in the train, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, then I will take a group photo. 
那个 and something 加啊。啊、uh, ，sorry。可可的全部不全。Oh, oh, oh, oh! Sorry, I, I, I found one student just, uh, ask us, can you hear me? Actually, I could not hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you unmute yourself. I think you can speak now. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, could you please repeat your questions? Hello, Anwar. I still could not hear you. Ah, uh, okay. I think I have to take photos, and um, maybe I can say uh one, two, three, and then smile. <laughs> then we can take a photo, okay? And uh, so uh one, two, three. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, Anwar, um, you ask us several questions, right? But we could not hear you. So I, I, I guess uh, he has uh, typed out his question. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's uh, uh, the question is that uh, whether TA assignment is a requirement for every PhD student? Yeah, everybody receiving stipend uh, would need to take um, a TA assignment. Yeah, uh, let me see. So there are, there are further questions. Uh, let me see here. For the application, let me see. So typically you will, you will, um, so you join the summer school here and you will, uh, prepare your application, I think, now, and you, you, you will submit your application uh, as soon as possible, uh, but, but uh, preferably before the end of uh, September. So if you get uh, your extent, uh, the application in in September, uh, then we, we can start to evaluate it and uh, we may give you a early, early admission. So you get an early admission, of course, it's to reduce your stress. You, you, you already have the offer, then, then that, that, will be, that will be better for you. And if you are not able to submit uh, your application by um, the end of October, then uh, you will be considered in the main round. You'll be considering the main round and uh, you'll get the offer later, of course. I think uh, they, they, typically the uh, main round, uh, the deadline of the main round is December, uh, early December, like December the 1st or something. But of course it depends, uh, uh, so it's tentative. So every year there, there are changes, but uh, the, the, the main round application deadline is typically in uh, very early December. And regarding the Hong Kong PFS, uh, Hong Kong PFS, I think uh, Professor Yuan has already uh, talked about it. The the uh, the result will be released in uh, in uh, March, I think. Okay. So Bernard, one student asked that, can we yeah. share the PowerPoint with them? Um, uh, let, 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 me, let me confirm with our office first. Okay. Okay, thanks.
Oh, another question. That's a very interesting question. Thanks for your question. So, so uh, the question was that uh, you need the supervisor endorsement. Of course, uh, uh, as a supervisor, uh, you need to contact a supervisor, and then the supervisor needs to needs to support your application before we can proceed uh, with uh, processing your application. So first of all, now uh, it would be essential for you to contact a supervisor first, uh, and then and then uh, you you will um, submit your application. And in particular, in your application, uh, if you have uh, if you have already contacted a supervisor or a faculty member, uh, please state which uh, faculty member that you have contacted in, in your application. That, that is a very important information. So maybe I can add uh, something more. Um, uh, so usually the student can directly send email to the supervisors. And uh, if the supervisor may have interested with you, and then they will arrange directly uh, interviews with you. So that after that, um, uh, the supervisor, uh, you have to submit your online application and then let your supervisor know your application ID. And after that, the supervisor will fill some forms with your application ID, and then we will submit to the offices. After that, the supervisor and you have already contacted and have already confirmed. And after that, our department will organize um, an interview. And uh, that is majorly conducted by Dr. Bernard, and he may uh, discuss with you some uh, general things. And after that, if everything goes smoothly your application will go into uh, approval of our department and our uh, graduate study and after that you will got an offer and also Bernard have already mentioned that if you submit your application very earlier then you may got your early admission which means that usually last year I have one admission early admission students which means that he got the offer in September so that it will be, uh, you will be have a lot of, you will be relieved a lot of uh, stress. And if you didn't catch the deadline, and then you usually will get an offer around January or February, right, Bernard? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, typically you get the offer from our university first before you know of the uh, result of Hong Kong PFS. Mm. Yeah. So any further questions? So we, we uh, so I have a question here uh, asking uh, the interview question basically. So I, I am familiar with uh, what our department will ask, but but Dr. Yun may be more familiar with what the um, Hong Kong PFS panel selection selection panel may ask, right? So if you are shortlist, you will be you you will have an uh, interview uh, no. with the panel member. No. No? no, 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 no. I oh, okay. only interviewed by our department. The department. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I see, I see. So, so in that case, uh, you will be only be interviewed by me. So, a uh, question uh, to you would be very general. So, uh, I will typically ask you uh, about your publication if you have any. Uh, and you have you have any awards? Uh, then describe uh, that awards, and also if you have any competition, then I would like to know uh, what you have achieved in that competition, and what awards you have you have won. So, 
other than that, of course, you can you, you should introduce to me um, your your expertise and why um, you are interested in uh, that particular uh, faculty member that you have contact with. So those are general, very general questions. But I think the first step is to uh, get conduct get touched with your uh, potential supervisor. And if your supervisor uh, wants to recruit you, then it will be much more easier and not be admitted by the Hong Kong BFS. I, uh, I mentioned that you may recruit it as a normal PhD. For the Hong Kong PFS, it will be a very rigid uh, procedure. It will, it will be nominated by our department, um, our university. It is a known procedure. But for the supervisor, I think it is the most important thing. For the supervisor the interview, I think it is depends on the different supervisors. For me, I think the most important thing is the research and also the personalities. So it's essential to get a, a faculty support uh, first before the department even consider your application. So the interview with the, with the supervisor would be more important than the interview with me. Okay. So, so you have to convince your supervisor that uh, you can contribute to his research area. So that's, that's the most important. So it thinks we don't have any more questions. Okay, so right, uh, if you, uh, we, we do not have any questions, so let's take a break, right? Okay. Okay, so we will take a break and uh, our first seminar is beginning at 11 and uh, looking forward to see you at 11. <laughs>